Welcome back to Pass the Turn. This is another Tabletop Tuesday segment, and today we are going to be continuing the uh, Eldritch Horror run through. Um, so, you've seen the very, very first turn of Eldritch Horror with some rules overview in the last video, but today is the day to continue the quest with Father Matteo and Preston Fairmont. Um, Preston Fairmont's in the possession of a silver key, so hopefully, that artifact will unlock some secrets and clues of Cthulhu's mythos and hopefully that's going to help us combat him going forward but um, tune in to the next section of the video and we'll see what happens so now it goes back to the actions phase um, so again we need to gain well Matteo needs to gain clues and spells and this guy just needs to gain spells so also I forgot to do the um, because we completed the expedition in Shanghai we put that to the bottom of the deck and then we put the expedition token on the next card in the pile, which is Antarctica. So the expedition is now in Antarctica if you want to go down there and try and get potentially another artifact if we want. But um, we pressed our luck, we've got a silver key. I think that's probably enough artifacts for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, so it's the priest first. He needs to gain spells, but he also needs to gain clues. So I'm just trying to think of what to do here. Um, so he hasn't done well in Arkham. So he, he's visited the asylum and he's seen some mad men. So maybe, maybe he's going to go down to Buenos Aires and try and gain a ritual spell down there. So what he's going to do, again, is grab a, a ship ticket in Arkham as his first action and then travel with his second action and then spend that ship ticket here to travel to Buenos Aires. So he's now in Buenos Aires ready to hopefully get another spell card in the encounter. So that's his go over. Uh, so our millionaire now is in Shanghai. Um, let's have a look what he can do. Hmm. So he can improve his law in Shanghai. Um, he could potentially go over to Tokyo and defeat monsters. Because um, that zombie horde is not great. When that activates, it, um, it bounces doom. So that's not great. Both wounded here, so uh, maybe rest. Uh, but he, he only needs a spell to defeat. Um, he only needs a spell, doesn't he, to do the quest. So he needs to get spells as well, ideally. So if I gain a ship ticket here and then travel to Tokyo and then spend the ship ticket over there, it brings me to space two. Um, what do I do with the millionaire? What do I do with him? If I, uh, if I can gain a ship ticket. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to gain a ship ticket with uh, this guy, but I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to use that ship ticket this this turn. So I'm going to gain a ship ticket, and then I'm going to rest. I'm going to get rid of a health and a sanity from the millionaire. He's going to rest in Shanghai. So he's still hanging around in Shanghai. Um, and he's gained a ship ticket for a future turn. So now the encounter phase comes up again and we've got the priest in Buenos Aires. So we draw a Buenos Aires green card here. And it is a, so the king in yellow is being performed at the Cervantes Theater. The play seems to infect your mind. Law test, so my, my uh, sorry, will test. Four, I've got four dice for this. So he's very, very good uh, at psychic um, things. So he needs five or six here. And we get six. Perfect. If you pass, you commit a key passage to the script. Of, to, you, you commit a key passage to, of the script to memory. Gain one ritual spell. So I've got a spell now for Father Matteo. All he needs now is a clue, and he can go to um, the spaces and start serving. There, there we go. There's a ritual spell. There we go. Shriveling. So he gains a shriveling spell, which he's probably he's not going to be using. He's going to be cashing that in. Although he could use it if he wanted to, but he's going to be cashing that in. But that's awesome. So if you can test your, your law, and if you pass, choose a monster on your space and lose one health. So that's good at just like shriveling monsters to nothingness, basically. And now we've got the millionaire in Shanghai. So Shanghai uh, ultimately improves your law if you want to pick a Shanghai card. Maybe you'll just go with a generic card and see what happens. Let's do a generic city instead. Generic city. A rich heir wants someone to fulfill his father's dying wish. You will not trust anyone who does not come highly recommended. Influence test. Perfect. Got five dice for this. 
So he's, yes, he's got a five, which is great. So I've passed that. If you pass, gain one task, unique asset. So unique assets are um, a big stack of, uh, of cards, similar to the way assets work, but they're more unique in the sense of they contain certain characters and certain stories. So I need to get a task from this particular deck here. There we go. Push it to the limit. So he's now got a task from Shanghai uh, as a general city um, action. When you perform a rest action, you may push your volley to its limit, strength. If you pass, place on an Eldritch token on this card. Then you may flip the card. So I imagine that's like a um, like a training thing. So you can the more you push it to the limit, the more um, the more rewards you're going to get when you flip the card in the long run. So that's interesting. So he's got that now if he needs it. So that's the encounter phase done. Now for the mythos phase, the most hated phase in Eldritch Horror. Okay, mass hysteria. So first of all, move the omen track down one. And if it matches a gate that's on the board, which it does, Hyperborea, moves down by one. So we're now on 10, Doom Track. Then resolve Reckoning Effects. Um, there's no Reckoning Effects of the main Cthulhu because no one's on a C space. This monster, um, roll one die. On a one or a two, advance Doom by one. So just having this zombie horde in the middle of the sea advances Doom if you roll one or two, which it does. So it advances Doom. Great. That's a poor. That's not great at all, is it? Okay, and then Reckoning Effects of any cards that are in play, nothing at all. So that's Reckoning Effects done. Spawn a portal. So portals get out of hand. So this one now is on Atlantis, another space eight. Another, another space that is no... Um, another space that's in the middle of the sea as well. So this is really thematic here. And from the depths of Atlantis, seen Aquaman recently, that was great. So out of the portal comes another um, another enemy, and this is Elder Thing. Uh, this particular creature has a little green icon on it in the top left or right corner, depending on how you're viewing it. Now, when this means that when this enemy comes out, he's placed somewhere else. So when this monster is spawned, move it to Antarctica. So Elder Things like to chill in Antarctica. So that's where he is right now. So the portal's been spawned. So, mass hysteria. Everywhere you go, people keep, people keep only those belongings that they think they will need or they think that will be valuable. They keep only what they can carry. The rest of them burn or bury, fearing the inevitable looting that will come with the end of the world event. The lead investigator chooses a number between 0 and 3 and advances Doom by that number. Then, search the asset deck, discard pile and reserve for all assets with the value equal to or greater than plus, uh, than two plus number of chosen there's no in terms of game box. Wow. Um, okay, right. So that's, that's ridiculous. The lead investigator chooses a number between 0 and 3 and advances Doom by the chosen number. Then search the asset deck, discard pile and reserve for all assets with the value equal to the or greater than 2. Interesting. So a lot of assets are now going to be flying to this card pile, returned into the game box, basically. Reserve for all assets with value equal to or greater than two, plus the chosen number, and return them to the game box. two or greater than two. So if I advance Doom by three, all the five all the five cost things will have to go. I don't think there are any five cost things though. I'm not sure if there are any five costs. You have to be extremely ridiculous to get five cost. Yeah what I'm gonna do yeah there's no five costs in here. So I'm going to choose three, because why not? Doom's already proceeding, so we might as well advance it by three. One, two, three. Doom is now on six. We're halfway doomed already to Cthulhu Rising. Wow. So basically, mass hysteria is all over the world right now, and people are just throwing things away, burning them, and just getting rid of all their belongings. But the priest and the millionaire have spoken up and said, no. 
don't do this. We need assets. We need them to defeat the, the creature at hand. So people stopped looting and stopped uh, burning all their possessions um, in the hope that the possessions that the world has can combat the threat at hand. So that was Mass Hysteria. Again, another horrible card. We've got some really horrible Mythos cards in this game, um, and uh, it's, it's not looking good for us right now. Okay, so uh, that's been dealt with. So we're now back to the actions again. Uh, so our Father Mateo has a spell, so he's, he's, he's on his way to be able to solve this quest, but he needs a clue. This guy doesn't need a clue because he's got the silver key. The millionaire doesn't need a clue because he's got a silver key which unlocks pretty much any door. Um, but the priest needs a clue. And the clue is in the middle of the sea right now, so he needs to go over there. So first of all, what he's going to do is he's going to rest. He's going to get rid of these, this health and the sanity damage that he took earlier from the end is nigh. And then he's going to move into the middle of the sea. So he's there waiting for that, that clue in Khan to come up. Um, and then the millionaire, um, so if he can travel, travel, he can go to San Francisco. Um, so he needs a spell, doesn't he? He needs a spell. So he's going to, uh, he's going to acquire another ship ticket. So he can get a maximum of two. Uh, where are the ship tickets gone? So you can get a maximum of two tickets. Um, so he's going to gain another ship ticket in Shanghai. So he's preparing for a massive voyage, basically. So he's gained another ship ticket. Um, he's fully healthy. Um, so he's going to try and acquire some assets, I think, from the from the reserve. Um, when you gain an asset from the reserve deck, recover one sanity. So he's got five influence. So what he's going to do is he's going to roll five dice. Five and six count as successes. One. So he gets one success, which will pay for this protective amulet. So he will buy this protective amulet. And then that gets replaced with another um, asset, which is upside down at the moment. So that gets replaced with a Vatican missionary. So he's now got a protective amulet. So he's got a load of trinkets on him now, this little millionaire guy. And um, that's it. So he's staying in Shanghai yet again. So now comes the encounter. So when a player wants to do a clue encounter, they take a specific card from the encounter deck, uh, which is tied to the particular monster that they're trying to study and find clues about. So this would be drawn from one of these looking cards here. The monster you're fighting will be in a picture here. And I'll have a little magnifying glass as a clue. And then you'd match the encounter space, so I'm on a C space right now, with the back of the card which has city, wilderness, or C on it. So I'm obviously reading the C part of this encounter. Cultists have taken the ship. Only one of them stands between you and the escape craft. If you have a dark packed condition, the main bows the man bows obediently, offering his help. Gain this clue. If you do not have a dark packed condition, a cultist monster ambushes you. Wow. So that was not good. So I've got on a ship on Buenos Aires. Uh, this priest has just boarded a ship full of cultists, basically. And he's not got a dark pact. So they know this because uh, they're, they're obviously they're in tune with the dark sides of the world. And a, a cultist ambushes me right now. So Cthulhu's cultists. Um, before resolving the strength test, lose one sanity, so I take one sanity damage. Um, so I take one sanity damage straight away. And these guys, what you do is you test your strength. So my strength is two at the moment. So I roll two dice, get a success, which cancels out his, his strength, um, and I therefore win the battle, I believe. I think. I've done one hit to him, he's done one hit to me. Let me just check. First rules check of the game here, coming in combat. Combat encounters. When encountering a monster, the investigator flips the monster token face down and reads the information on the back of the token. He then resolves two tests. First a will test, then a strength test. Yeah, okay, so strength. Will test is um, 
doesn't have will test, basically. Um, okay. If the monster's damage is greater than the number of successes rolled, the investigator loses health equal to the difference, which it isn't. The monster loses health equal to the number of successes on the roll, indicating this, what place in the get. Okay, so I've defended his attack, and a success has killed the ambushing um, cultist. So I've managed to kill the ambushing cultist, but no clue is mine, which is egg. So again, another useless encounter for the priest. Uh, and now it's over to Shanghai. So will he do another generic city encounter, or will he do a improved law, potentially? Um, let's do a generic again. Do a generic again. So we're in a city. A local festival gives you a chance to speak with the city's Denzians. Another influence test. This is great. This is great. This character is doing really well right now. Two, three successes there. That's great. If you pass, they are delighted by you and want to share what they know. Gain one talent condition. So now this guy has gained a condition called a talent. Now a talent is a obviously a good thing. So he's in Shanghai and he's gained a talent condition. So it'll be one of these cards here. Let me just, just scroll through until I get a talent. Talent, there we go, headstrong. So now the millionaire is now headstrong after all his gambling and you know his alcoholism and what have you. He's now quite headstrong. Once per round, when you would lose sanity, you may test your will. If you pass, prevent the loss of up to two sanity, then flip the card. So that's pretty cool. I like that. His will is only one, so it's not great, but there you go. He's become more headstrong while he's been diving in rivers and um, speaking to local Dendians in Shanghai. So that's the, um, that's the encounter phase done. Now the dreaded Mythos phase is upon us. And that is a rumour. So a rumour card is like another side quest that, if left undone, will undo your game. Uh, they're horrible, they stick around, and they do some devastating things. So first of all, uh, spawn a clue token. So another clue token comes out, luckily. So this will give us another chance to find another clue. This goes on space four, so that's all the way up there, which is within reach of our millionaire. Um, but he doesn't need a clue, so that, that's useless. And then you place the rumor token on Tunguska, which is over here. So the rumor token goes over here, like so. And then, three Eldritch tokens. So, a consortium of astronomers and geologists have sent you to find samples of the stones that they impacted the Earth's surface here. They believe they can predict when and where the meteorites will strike next by examining the stones. So, exploring the crater. So, this is an ongoing side quest that you can, you can do. As an encounter, an investigator on Tunguska may search for samples of the meteorite that fell there with an observation test. You may then spend clues equal to the number of half the investigator. So, that would just be one clue to solve the, ru the rumour. Um, when there are no Eldritch tokens on this card, draw and resolve two disasters, then resolve, then solve this rumour. Right, so this rumour is in Tunguska right now, and it's got three tokens on it. So every time a reckoning symbol comes up, we have to remove a counter from that particular card up there. And if all the tokens would be removed, then we have to resolve a disaster card which is something that came in the Cities in Ruin expansion, which basically decimates towns and cities so they cannot be used in the game whatsoever. So that's not great at all. So that's another side quest up there which can screw us over if we do not deal with it. But luckily that's the, um, the Mythos phase done with um, on there because rumour cards just pop up and stay there and they will hurt you in the long run if you don't do anything about them. So that's going to plague us for a while. But now we're now back to the actions phase um, as well. So um, our priest is in the middle of the sea right now, but he kind of wants to stay there uh, because of the fact that there's a clue there and he's got a spell and he needs a clue to get rid of to, to, to solve the quest at hand for Cthulhu and the tre threatening seas. Um, so I think he's probably going to stay there. He's going to... Uh, let's have a look. He's going to gain some focus. A focus obviously can be used as a um, re-roll, so he's going to gain a focus and then he's going to rest to get rid of his sanity that he took from the cultist earlier in the middle of the boat. So that's his action, so he's just gained a bit of a bit of focus. Now, 
The minion air's turn, he's going to have to make a move now. He's going to have to go to um, and try and gather some spells. So, first thing he's going to do is move. So he moves to Tokyo, then he spends a train, uh, boat ticket to cross the um, Pacific. It's not Pacific, is it? It's like the Sea of Japan or something like that. So he crosses from Tokyo to this sea space over here. Then he spends his last ship ticket to arrive in San Francisco. Uh, so both his ship tickets are now spent. So he's now on the, uh, the American continent. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So now down to the encounter phase. This uh, Father Mateo is going to be trying to solve clues on uh, Cthulhu again. So he's going to draw another sea encounter. A cultist calls for help. A deep one monster amb ambushes you. So, a deep one ambushes me. So I found the deep one in the big bag of monsters. Uh, and it says, if you pass the will test, the creature kills the cultist who is holding an odd item. Gain one magical artifact. Wow, so this is not even a clue that you get for this. This is an artifact if you kill this thing. So if you pass the will test, if you pass the will test, the creature kills the cultist. Okay, so the will test is two. And I'm rolling four dice. I do have a re-roll also, so six. Oh, no, it's two, isn't it? So I need to re-roll. I need to re-roll a dice, really. Um, oh, come on, this is gold. So I'm spending my focus to re-roll one of my dice, and I need a success here. Come on! No, it's not the one. It's not the one or the two or the three. If you do not defeat the monster, you are traumatized. Gain hallucinations condition. Wow. So I think I have to do the strength test as well, so I might as well do that. My strength is two, minus one, so I get one die for this. I also take damage as well. Wow, that's not good. That's not good at all. I also take one psychic damage. Wow, this priest is getting battered around. He really is. And he's now got a hallucinations condition as well, which is not great at all for anyone. Um, oh, that's not good. Hallucinations. It's not really good, is it? So this is when things start getting out of hand. When you start getting loads of different conditions um, and you start taking damage and not rolling very well, it can go bad quite quickly. Um, now we got the priest hallucinating himself senseless. Um, I'm just trying to find hallucinations card now. Uh, it's not great. Amnesia, no. Leg injury, no. Elusive, no. No. Dark pact, no. Blessed, no, definitely not. Despair, no. No. Haunted, no. No, no, no. Cursed, martial prowess, no. Amnesia, no. Hallucinations, where are you? Debt, no. Blessed, amnesia. There's a lot of conditions you can get in this game, and the great thing about the conditions on this game is every back to a condition is unique, so if your condition comes back to haunt you, the effect every time is different, so it's... Um, Awesome in a thematic sense, but your character, there we go, hallucinations, um, suffers horribly if these conditions come to pass. And again, these conditions have the red reckoning symbol on them, so when the red reckoning symbol comes up on a Mythos card, that's when you trigger that. So the deep one um, frightened the shit out of the fucking um, priest. So again, he's failed in his, um, in, his, in his research. He's not doing well at all, the priest. He's not getting the clues that he needs to at all. Uh, now over to the millionaire in San Francisco, and he's going to take this opportunity to improve his observation. It says, uh, San Francisco, you can improve your observation by getting a San Francisco card most of the time. So he's going to take a green San Fran card. So his observation is only two, so hopefully he can improve it a little bit. San Francisco, the mechanical face inside a fortune-telling machine at Playland at the beach seems to scare off most patrons. Do a will test. One. One, te one will test, yeah? Great. Doesn't do it. Anything we can do? No. If you pass, no. If you fail, the destiny you fled continues to seek you out. Lose one sanity and gain one pursuit condition. Wow. So, he got a horrible fortune in San Francisco. He's taken a sanity damage and now he also has a pursuit card condition as well, which means he's being followed by something um, as well, which is not great. Um, so let me just try and find a pursuit card. Um, 
This isn't going well for our heroes right now. Um, it's really not. Um, we've got the priest is just not doing anything with his life. And then we've got this guy who's now scared of his own future because of a fucking thing at a bloody fairground or something. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm not sure I'm just trying to find a um, pursuit now. Um, where is it? Come on. Pursuit. Half the game really is just finding the cards when you get them because there's so many. There we go, pursuit. Hunted. So my character is now hunted. By what? I don't know until I have to flip the card over, which is not, not great for anyone. Okay, so now the encounters have been done. Not very successful phase for us at all. And now comes the mythos phase, which is also probably going to smack us around even more. It's another rumour card. So again, what we do is we spawn a clue. So more clues come out, which is a plus. Uh, but the rumour cards, again, are not great. They're like more time restrictions on the game, really. So this, this spawns in space three which is right over there with the zombie horde on the portal space, so that's not great at all. And then uh, we spawn a rumour on space 19. That's 19. Over there as well, near, near the other one. Wow, okay. So we've got two rumours, another one up here. Two rumours in the same sort of space. After a sudden burst of flying debris, you are confronted by a terrifying figure. It is a stark reminder that dark forces in this world are working tirelessly to annihilate you. Return of the Ancient Ones. Wow. Wow, okay. So, when an investigator on Space 19 defeats a monster, he may spend one clue to place that clue, um, to place that monster on this card. When the total toughness of monsters on this card is equal to or greater, than investigators, which is two, then solve the rumour. Now, if a reckoning symbol comes up, spawn one monster on space 19. Then, if there are four or more monsters on space 19, advance doom to zero and solve the rumour. So monsters are going to come pouring out of that area, and we have to kill monsters equal to the toughness of two, because you've got two players, in order to solve it. And I just shook the camera there, which is not great. I just want to have my legs up underneath the table. Um, so that's not good either but again it's another rumor that hasn't had any negative effects right now so it's given it a brief rest but still we haven't even put an eldritch token on the cthulhu quest card yet um on threatening seas so it's not going well for us doom is already at six so we just have to keep pressing on and seeing what we can do here Thanks for tuning in to yet another eldritch horror episode here on the tabletop tuesday section of past the turn it's a tough one. It's been a tough couple of rounds. We haven't really progressed the quest any further and we've and we've gone through three turns. The millionaire is still trying to traverse the Pacific Ocean to get some spells so he can contribute to the quest and Father Mateo is out in the sea doing absolutely nothing with his life. Um, a couple of rumours have appeared as well which also adds to the tension of needing to get stuff done in this game and we're not getting the real stuff done either so it just adds to that um, to that difficulty. Eldritch Horror is just one of those games that is very, very tough. Uh, it's very, very chaotic also. Um, so it's, it's difficult once you start getting behind to, um, to, you know, to sort of catch up with it again. But make sure you tune in next time for the, um, the next instalment in the game. Probably the last episode as well. Probably an extended um, gameplay session. Um, but who knows? Tune back in next time and see what happens. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe.